that mountainside Where those tall pine trees seem to touch the sky Where the morning sun shines in the sky On those crystal streams that sparkle by Took me eight years to get that throw down. But don't let that discourage you because there are people out there who've done it a lot quicker than me. This is a target used for international competition by the World Atlatl Association. It's called the International Standard Accuracy Contest. We abbreviate it for ISAC. Each year all around the United States and all over Europe, uh, people compete in sanctioned meets and their scores are listed online. At the end of the year, people receive a world ranking and a world champion is crowned for the men's division, the women's, and the youth division. Now, when I started competing a few years ago, I had to go over to Ohio. And, uh, because as of then, we did not have the Mountaineer Atlanta Association of West Virginia yet formed. Ohio is a hotbed for world-class throwers. There are three men over there that at one time or the other have held world championships. And they have a couple of gals also that have been ranked in the top five down through the years. Today, I'm gonna to take you to the first meet I ever attended competed in over in Ohio. It was Logan, Ohio, not too far from Columbus. It was a Native American powwow, and uh, I made a lot of friends on that day and kind of got broke in for the competition. After we watch that, we're going to take you on an actual atlatl deer hunt, so uh, do not fall asleep on us. I'll get back with you here in just a little bit. We're at the Logan Powwow. I think it's right outside of Rock Ridge, Ohio. About 30, 40 miles south of Columbus. And I'm here with Mamerto. What's your full name? My name is Mamerto Tindongan. That's my uh, Christian name. My native name is Lagita. And my spiritual name is Kiwata means peacemaker. That's from my uh, small tribal uh, community. And you're working, I'm assuming, on this piece of Osage orange. And you're working on a natal stick? Atlatl? Uh, yeah, I'm trying to make an atlatl. Atlatl. I gotta say atlatl. I just say atl. Atlatl or atl atl. Atl atl. Yeah. And, uh, and how long will it take you to do this stick? Uh, 20 minutes to 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Depending on the design. So can we have a look at your... Uh, well, you keep working. Oh, here it is, right yeah, here. That's uh, one of the simple designs. You know, it's made out of uh, uh, ash. And it's from ash. a branch. You know, it's split it and chop it up. This got a little yeah. fork here, an old spear in. Got a banner stone about a third way down. Can you zoom on that right there? You can see. Yeah, that's, that's the main part here. The, the where, hole. Yeah, whereas we drill a hole for the spur and put an Osage piece in there, he's just whittled that around by hand, I see. Yeah, I have uh, uh, gouges that 
And tell me, tell us again what this is. Oh, that's a pawpaw seed. Pawpaw seed, it has special meaning for him. Uh, okay. I, I, okay, well, we've got some other people we want to talk to. We've got Ray Streischek over here. Did I get your last yeah. name right? Let's step out here in the sun. How's the lighting look here? And, uh, you want me to get by that now? And Ray is one that you sort of organize the local event here, don't you? Yeah. Okay. And uh, how long have you been throwing? 15 years. 15 years? I understand you're a world class thrower. Yep. Well, okay. One time. <laughs> uh, well, we're looking forward to, to filming your throw today. And uh, how do you pronounce A T O A T L? Atlatl. Atlatl. I've heard Atlatl, Atlatl, Atl, Atl. But Atlatl, I want to get it right. I just, I'm a hillbilly. I just say Atl. Well, we've got Steve Barnett over here. Oh, yeah. And I, I, seen his name on the internet so he must be somebody important <laughs> yeah I'm important I'm on the internet <laughs> you're on the internet yeah okay yeah you're gonna throw for us today too yeah, well, yeah, we'll for you a little bit. okay ah nice shot Oh yeah, bullseye. Damn, I hope you're prepared to get showed up by a woman today. Cause we're in trouble. And it breaks off all the time. Well, my God, Ray, this spear is more crooked than mine. If that boy's giving me a hard time, I'm like, you don't have to have a straight spear. Here, show us what you got. All right, dart. A good dart has a balance point that is about six to eight inches forward to the center. That's so that it flies in an arc. The further forward you have it, the quicker the point drops. Right? And the bigger feathers you have, the more it acts as stability, but also drag. It means it slows the dart down. Again, a dart has to be flexible to work on the atlatl because the dart has to bend out of the way of the oncoming atlatl when it's first thrown and storing up energy as it loads. So when it springs off the atlatl, the dart flexing itself helps propel the dart down towards the target. Uh, that was good shooting. I appreciate you not hitting all bullseyes because I wouldn't be able to throw if you would. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Who's up here today? Very excited. We came here today to film the Adelato competition. Oh, Lord, Getting some really strong feelings here. Yeah. Uh, really strong feelings. Circle, we try to live close to here. So what are you on? What are you filming for? Inside. I did not see that. That's it? Yeah. Counterclockwise. Rattlesnake? Rattlesnake. <laughs> Rattlesnake. Did you eat him? Ate him. I made some very meaningful and lasting friendships at that meet. 
Mamerto Tendongan, a man who grew up in the Philippines back in the 60s in a primitive tribe wearing a loincloth. Well, we formed a bond. And today I'm going to take you on what would prove to be the first of many hunts that we would do together with the ancient atlatl spear. Now, get this. We're up in a tree. He's standing on the crotch of a limb. I'm out on the end of the limb with the camera. A deer comes in. He's afraid. Oh, we're way up in this pine tree. He's afraid to come back too far that he might hit a branch. So the first shot, he short arms. Second deer comes in. He gets another shot. He gets a full swing on it. So you're going to enjoy this. But before we go there, I'm going to take some 30 meter shots. The international competition goes all the way back to 20 meters. The Ohio goes back to 25. And the West Virginia goes all the way back to 30. So let's see if there's any magic in this stick today. hunting off the pine lamb tonight. It's from the Philippines. So, got out a little late and it's a little windy, but I think it'll be good. Don't get this nervous when I'm hunting. I was shaking. Let's let's get out of here. Let this place settle down. Okay. Let's go on back and eat. We'll hit another place tomorrow, okay? Hey, that was fun. Well, that was pretty cool how that first deer came in and licked the spear. I've never seen that before. That's the funny thing about hunting out of the tree with that lattle spear. It really doesn't spook deer very bad. They treat it like uh, a limb has fallen out of the tree. On that second shot, at first we thought he'd just thrown high. But when we watched the tape in slow motion, we could see that the spear was right on the kill area. The deer just dropped down to lunge forward. Spear slid across the top of his back, and as he came up, phew, spear goes flying through the air. 
We're going to show you an interview that I did with Mamerto a few years ago. And then after that, we're going to wrap everything up. This past year, I've been uh, blessed to have met two really good friends, two really special people. And one of them is Mamerto. And how do you pronounce your last name? Tindoman. You got it? I'm not saying it. But Mamerto is originally from the Philippines. He is a world-class at ladle thrower. He's a very humble man, so I won't ask him. But he has thrown a 97 out of 100. And there's only been I had two people I know of that ever thrown a 98. But we're going to move on. But uh, first of all, tell us about growing up in the 60s in the mountains in the Philippines. Yeah, I have a lot of good memories. Uh, I belong to the Ifugao tribe, a small tribe that resides in the northern part of uh, Luzon Island. Luzon is the biggest island in the Philippines. Um, we are the only second tribe that were not uh, totally subjugated by the Spaniards. Mm. We were under, the Philippines under Spain for 300 years. And we were not totally uh, Christianized compared to our uh, lowland brothers. We call them lowland because we are in the mountains area. And like here, you know, there's regional uh, discrimination, like you are called hillbillies. <laughs> in Kentucky, West Virginia, and part of Ohio. Yes, we are. We were called monkeys. Monkeys. By our lowland <laughs> brothers, because we were, uh, we were um, low in cloth, and it has like a tail, the end of the low in cloth sticking on both sides. You didn't have electricity? No electricity, and uh, it was only in the early 80s that we had electricity. And you grew, you were a boy in the 60s? Yes. And so your people basically lived off the land. They farmed, they grew rice. Yes. Tell us about the terraces. Yeah, it is one of our important uh, heritage because, uh, you know, we live in a harsh environment. Our ancestors were ingenious in making a living. They terraced the mountainsides and they uh, have they develop uh, an irrigation system that's based on gravity to uh, uh, plant the terrace field for planting mm -hmm. rice. The terraces are flooded all year round because that's how uh, uh, rice survive. And uh, you know, eventually, you know, when we were discovered <laughs> by <laughs> foreigners, you know. Uh, they marvel the terraces that it became a, a tourist attraction. What type of meat did you eat? And how did the people hunt and gather? We, uh, for larger animals, we usually uh, trap using snares or uh, spear like uh, where you set up. And uh, there's a tree for where when the animal, uh, a deer or a wild boar, will trip that string, they will be speared. Um, now you were a trapper. I, uh, my specialty is trapping birds. Tell us how you did that. We set snares, either uh, set snares where they are feeding or along brooks during summer, you know, they go and drink. So we cover uh, all the water that's exposed with uh, twigs branches, leaves, and only a small opening mm -hmm. is uh, exposed, but there's a snare there, <laughs> so when the bird will go and drink, they will be caught. And you were cooking over an open fire? Yes. What were the houses made out of? Uh, our uh, traditional houses is like the teepee. It has a steep roof, but it's, it is elevated. It has four poles. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything is done there, cooking, sleeping. What is it covered with? It is with the um, thatch, thatch roof. Thatch roof. Thatch, thatch yeah. roof. Gotcha. Okay. Well, I, uh, 
We could sit here and talk forever. Mamerta and I were up late last night. He's a spiritual minded person and we were up for hours and hours and uh, my life's been enriched by you being here. It's hard to believe that somebody who grew up in the Philippines back in the 60s in a primitive tribe would someday come to America and earn a master's degree from Ohio University. I promise you this, you have not seen the last of the Filipino wonder. This is a par three on our 18 hole at Lato golf course here at um, Hokahe Farm in Mason County, West Virginia. And uh, I'm going to uh, see if I can hit the green and get a couple of birdies. Oh, a little short. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a couple of birdies there. Hey, it was great having you with us today. And remember this if that laddles are outlawed, only outlaws will have that land. Got lost down on Myrtle Road Shot a flare up in the sky No one came cause no one cared Did you leave me there? Did you hope I'd die? I die, I die, I die, I die, I die, I die. Felt the anger, then I felt the pain. Felt your love till you jerked the chain. 